Hello and welcome everybody to this Fabric Espresso. I'm joined here today by Estera, which means we're going to talk about Spark. You might have known Estera from the previous times where we talked about side of Spark. Now we're going to talk about Fabric Spark. So Estera, what's hot, what's cool, what's new inside Fabric Spark? Yeah, so we took all of our best features from Synapse Spark and plug it into Fabric data engineering component. And of course, based on that, we build a couple of new features that will make the experience for every data engineer and every data scientist more pleasant. And in this upcoming YouTube series, I would love to focus and dwell into Microsoft Fabric from the data engineering side, as well as from the data science uh, side. So with data synapse, data engineering, uh, our goal was to simplify data handling process. So we know that data engineers spend tons of time on trying to connect the various products, different components, uh, worrying about setting and maintaining different applications and trying to consolidate them together, consolidate different data set. And uh, our goal is to make the experience uh, for data engineering pleasant in a way we want them to focus on the primary task, so providing valuable data. At the same time, we know that with the component Synapse Data Science, so we try to empower every data scientist to use exactly the same data that was prepared by data engineering team. This will eliminate the need to copy data and uh, that is giving the way to access the data sets immediately, access the files immediately once uh, those assets are ready, prepared for data engineering team. And I will host my colleagues from both data engineering and uh, data science product groups here. And we believe that uh, we'll drive into the, every specific uh, features that every product manager is, is driving. So we explore unique capabilities from both sides. We'll try to demo them and at the end show how, to, how everything integrates seamlessly with the existing workflow. That sounds great, Estera. So basically, you also told host. Basically, that means that for me, data engineering is not really my cup of tea. So Estera is way better host for this. So let's bring in Ted and let's start talking about our first topic. Yes. So it. for the first topic, we will discuss the top three fabric features which every data engineer should know and use. Hey, Ted. Can you introduce yourself and share what cool you are working on? Yeah, so uh, my name is Ted Vilutis. Uh, I'm a product manager on uh, Fabric, uh, Microsoft Fabric team. Uh, I've been with the team for uh, almost two years, so almost mm -hmm. since the beginning when, when the project has started. Uh, it was really interesting, right? Uh, working all the features and, and delivering the product for public preview. Uh, lots of work still ahead, and, and that's where it makes fun. So I'm working on data engineering uh, workload. So things like Spark, um, Lakehouse, uh, Notebooks, and the rest. Uh, my primary role is actually integration with other workloads. So that's where I'm kind of in an interesting space with intersection with uh, lots of other teams. Sounds very exciting. <laughs> and a lot of work. So can you walk us through your top three features that every data engineer should be aware of that it's ready and available in Microsoft Fabric? Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. And I would say that it's also uh, a very subjective question. Uh, basically, there are so many great features and every data engineer will find something interesting for them. I personally think uh, the unique things or, or what makes, you know, wow effect for me in Fabric are shortcuts. So it's uh, ability to reference data instantly, large amounts, like hundreds of terabytes of data being available for your data workloads without the need to copy it. Uh, I think it's it's a great thing for a lot of companies which already have established the data lakes uh, and one just basically to use Fabric for analytical purposes or for data science. 
So that's first. Second thing uh, is SQL endpoints. So whenever you create a lake house uh, where you can run basically uh, Spark on top of it, um, analyze data for data science uh, with notebooks, etc. In addition, you can also same data can be served without copying for the SQL endpoint. So what SQL endpoint is? It's basically same data warehouse functionality as in data warehouse, just in read-only mode. But you can create all functions, you can set SQL policy, access rules, and everything so works as it you were in data warehouse on a data which actually is in uh, Lake House. And the third thing um, is Spark startup time. Uh, you know, we have products like Synapse and other ones. It takes a lot of time for Spark to load. You need to allocate the compute for that and, and specify, you know, clusters, everything. In Fabric, it's available instantly. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You just need to have your capacity assigned to you and, and basically it's there, it's running. So for me, it's like part of magic. <laughs> what about you, Sarah? What you like most? Yeah, I fully agree with the last one. Uh, like choosing the proper hardware, like cluster configuration, is one, like one objective. But then we have to wait. Traditionally, we have to wait uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes for Spark session to come up for us. In Fabric, it's ten seconds uh, that we need to pin your notebook with the compute capabilities. So for me, as a like hands-on data engineer, that's the, the top one. I don't want to waste my time, like three minutes, especially if I want to just do some explanatory data analysis, especially like on some, some delta or parquet table. The second, uh, and it's not a net feature because we still have it in uh, yeah, synapse meaning uh, in, uh, installing libraries. So many times, uh, trying I'm, I'm trying to add some my custom libraries. And uh, previously, we had to use some specific uh, magic command with Microsoft Fabric. We are just using pip install the name of the uh, library, or we can bring that uh, like our custom libraries as well through the uh, library management uh, feature. And those are the top two. The three is about the collaboration, that we can share the notebook and we can together work on the same notebook share, like do the live coding together uh, at the same time, uh, do the code review of our uh, like notebook, which we can uh, author in a different way, meaning PySpark, so Python, Scala, so Spark, we have Spark SQL, so for all SQL lovers, it's the ability to bring the code, T-SQL, SQL code to Spark and, and just run it. We also have the support for uh, R language. So those are my top uh, three features. And for sure, we'll dig into the next episodes into the cool flavors of every, every feature that was mentioned. <laughs>